Come on, good morning. Put those hands together, Mount Joy. Put those hands together. Oh, come on. Put them hands together this morning. Good morning, everybody. Come on. Here we go. Say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Say, trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Glad, glad. glad. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. Listen. He may not come when you want him. But he's on time. Yes, he is. On time. In times of trouble, found him to be a friend of mine. Oh, mine, yeah. Of mine. When storm clouds rise in your life, just know that he'll be there. Yes, he will. Be there. All of my burdens. I found him to be, oh no, yeah. Too bad. Say, trouble on. I'm so glad. Come on, clap those hands, everybody. Say, trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. Come on, say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, glad, glad. Trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. Can I sing that? Can, can I sing that verse again? Listen. He may not come when you want him, my God, but he's on time. Yes, he is. On time. In times of trouble, I found him to be a friend of mine. My, yeah. Of mine. When storm clouds rise in your life, just know that he'll be there. Yes, he will. All of your burdens, I know the Lord that He will bear. He will bear, yeah. You bear. Cause I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Come on, stand to your feet if you can. Say trouble don't last. Trouble don't last away. If you're making those eggs, say I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Glad, glad. Say trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. Let's take it to the bridge. Somebody say, we've been made. We've been made. Endure for night. night. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. It will be alright. Say, we've been made. We've been made. Endure for night. night. Uh, if you keep the faith. Keep the faith. It will be Say, all we've been right. made. Uh, Somebody say, put them hands together right where you are. Come on. Everybody say, trouble don't last. Trouble don't last always. Ah, yeah. oh, no, trouble don't last always. Say, trouble don't last, yeah. Trouble don't last always. Come on, yeah. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Say trouble, trouble don't last, yeah. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't trouble last don't, always. Trouble don't last always. Say trouble don't last, yeah. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always, no, yeah. No, no, trouble don't last we've always. Say we've been made. We've been made. Endure for night. Keep the faith. Keep Say we've been made. We've been made. Endure for night. night. If you keep the faith. Keep the faith. It will be alright. Say, ah, come on, everybody say. Trouble don't last always. Trouble don't last always. Come on, put them hands together this morning. Come on, put them hands together this morning. Put those hands together this morning. Amen. Amen. 
How many know there's something about that name? The name above every name. The name, the name that made Satan kind of move his shoulder a little bit. I mean, you know. We just gonna sing this little song before the uh, message comes up. There's just something about, about that name. That name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after, after the rain kings and kingdoms Ooh. they shall all pass, pass away. away but there's something, something about, about that, name. that name can we sing it one more time say Jesus Jesus, Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus, there is something, there's just something about, about that name, that name, Master, Savior, Master, Jesus, Like a fragrance, like a fragrance after, after the rain. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all, all pass away. But there's something about that name. Say there's something. Something about the name Jesus. Oh, something. Something about that name Jesus. It's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love that name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the sweetest name I know. Say there's something about that name, Jesus. Something about the name, Jesus. Something about that name. Something about the name, Jesus. It's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the sweetest name I know. I know. I gotta be excited. Oh, how I love. Oh, how I Oh how, I love. oh, how I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Man. It is the sweetest name mm -hmm. I know. Some people say I'm crazy, but uh, I can't explain the power that I feel. Oh, yeah. When I call your name, when I call your name. Said it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving. Said it just won't leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something about something about the name Jesus. Something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. It is the sweetest name. 
say. I know. Oh, oh, oh how I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name, yeah. It is the sweetest name. I know. Say, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, there is something, something about, about that, name. that name. You all, you all ought to get excited about that name. Master, Master, Savior, Savior, Jesus. Like a fragrance after the rain. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away. But there is something about about that name. About the name. Whoa, there is something. something. There is something, something about, about that name. That name. There is something about that name. Somebody put your hands together. Give God a shout of praise in him. Amen. the Lord today, Jesus, 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 there's just something, something good about that name, our master, my savior, Jesus. E.J. Buford, amen, E.J., good job, God bless you, amen. We thank God for blessing us to be here, you know, but uh, you, you don't really have church until you pray. Amen, you can come in and do all kind of stuff. You can't even preach if you don't pray. And praying is about using that name yeah. it's about calling on the father and and, and 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 using the name to give you the right to call so let's pray right now father god we come in the name of jesus we give you praise and honor and glory right now lord we lift you up, Lord. We thank you for always hearing us. We thank you, Father, for what you've already done, Father, for the many dangers, toils, and snares we've already come through. We thank you, Lord, that when we were sick, you healed us. When we were in trouble, Lord, you bailed us out. When we didn't know which way to go, you, you, you've given us guidance, dear Lord. We thank you. We thank you for letting us be here today and letting us have a connection, uh, uh, whether it's in person or, or, or through live streaming with, with so many. And Lord, I, I pray for every single one. The old folk used to say some need one thing and some need another. But Lord, you know our needs. You know our wants. You, you know our heart's desires. 
And Lord, I just pray for your presence. I, I, I thank you, Lord, for being with us. I pray that you would bless your word, that you would bless your people uh, through your word, bless your servant with your word. And let someone who come in down be lifted up. There's someone who came in trouble, dear Lord, be bailed out. There's someone, dear Lord, who came in with whatever, whatever need, dear Lord, uh, you know better than we know that you would bless in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would bless our, uh, our families and our, uh, our state, our, our, our nation, our world, dear Lord. We trust it in your name. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen, amen. That song made me want to pray. Amen. Uh, a couple of announcements before we get really started. Uh, we want to congratulate our, our, our daughter, Martasia Hill, on being inducted into the Granite City High School National Honor Society. Amen. Amen. You know, she's always loved learning. I remember she was, uh, I guess she was about five, six. She, she loved learning, and uh, I'm glad that that love is still there. Uh, coming up this coming Saturday, uh, it's going to be, what do they call it? Uh, well, you'll be streaming that if you turn in or tune in. Uh, Mount Joy Baptist Church, we're having a, a, a virtual prayer breakfast. Now, uh, some folk I heard they're going to bring us some food. But at 9.30 a.m. on this coming Saturday, the theme is Faith in Times of Uncertainty. And our deacons are sponsoring it, and our admission is sponsoring it. Uh, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. That's Matthew 24, 36. So we want to encourage you to uh, uh, tune in, uh, hook in, and, and, and pray with us uh, on this coming Saturday. And one more thing, and this is a little later uh, on Saturday, I think that's right, April 3rd, okay, that's the day before Easter Sunday, uh, month, uh, we, we're having a little Easter egg hunt for ages 3 through 12, so if you're 13, don't come. <laughs> uh, so uh, it don't have a time, I'm sorry, it does, 1.30 to 2.30. 1.30 to 2.30. Amen. That's ages uh, uh, 3 through 12. Amen. Um, we want to call your attention, if you will, to the book of Galatians. And we're going to get to Romans, but we're going to just read Galatians. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Uh, read the whole thing, but we're going to focus on verses 13 through 25. Galatians 5. If you are honor God's word with me by my standing, those of you here, and uh, uh, if you're in bed at home, get out of bed and, and, and uh, be at attention at least if you don't have your Bible out for the word of God. Amen. Uh, it says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. That's good news, right? Yeah. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this you shall love your neighbor as yourself but if you bite and devour one another beware at least you be consumed by one another i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, 
self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like. He named a bunch of them, but it's still some more. Of which I'll tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. This may be maybe not the most intriguing word, not the most popular message or topic, but it may be the most important thing we've talked about all year. One of the, uh, the least favorite things in life for many of us is having to follow rules that limit what we can do and what we can't do. I, I don't like rules. Uh, uh, I, I left home as soon as I could because my mother had a curfew. And boy, I, I just, I had a hard time but they curfew. When something tells us what to do and when to do it, we don't feel like doing it. Because to me, that sounds too much like slavery. I, I think I'm safe to say that none of us enjoy being controlled by real strict rules. There's nothing more distasteful for me than to have someone dictate my every move as if I'm incapable of deciding anything on my own. And most of you heard me talk about my older brother, and, 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 and I hope you he, hope he don't mind. I didn't ask him if it was okay, but uh, from the time I was about, I guess about nine or 10, until I was about 16, we didn't get along too good because he thought that he was responsible for me. I'm not trying to be critical of him, my, my mother probably told him to keep an eye on me and look out for your brother. And the problem was that he took that to mean that he could tell me what to do. In my mind, I knew that I had to obey adults, but I didn't accept his right and in my mind, to rule me. And even though what he was telling me 99% of the time was right, I had a problem with it. The truth is, to this day, I have never liked restrictions and rules that limit my right to make my own choices. I see somebody else feel the same way. Yeah. One of the reasons I appreciate God so much is that he gives us all the right to choose. Now, we may have to live with some consequences, but he gives us the right to choose. This letter from Paul to the church in Galatia highlights an, uh, an alternative to worrying about the laws and all the rules that we have to deal with. If we focus on what Paul teaches here, it, it, it gives us another and a, a better way to stay out of trouble. I, I got in a lot of trouble when I was young because of that, than keeping all the rules. And it's based on our, our choice. As I indicated, our, our focus is, is, is part of a letter Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. And, and this might be my, I, I, I think it's, it's really important that we get this. In this particular portion of the letter, he is addressing the debate. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning a little bit. Uh, 
between the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers in Christ. The Jewish believers were asserting that if Gentiles wanted to be Christians, they had to first go through and keep all the laws and practices the Jews had been practicing even before Christ came. That was Judaism. And Paul argued that the Gentiles did not have to keep the old Jewish laws in order to be saved. He taught that faith through love was the one and only qualification for salvation. And let me show you, and it's in verse 6 if you read it. It's important that you check behind people and make sure they're telling you right. Verse 6 says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision, and they're arguing about circumcision, nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. And he goes on to point out in, in verse 23, uh, and that's a key one, that uh, against the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law. In other words, you can't be condemned or criticized by the law if you follow the Spirit. Now, there's way too much stuff here for us to try to cover it all, but, but uh, we're going to key on one thing. I, I want to pick out a concept that we almost never get to when we teach this. Self-control. Self-control. Or if you will, if, if you will, uh, a, more, a more palatable being called to liberty. being called to liberty. So that's the same thing, self-control. It means that you got the liberty. So faith through love was the only one. Not law control, not parent control, not big brother control, <laughs> not spouse control, and to some extent not even God control. I want to talk about self-control. We are all responsible for ourselves. And notice, if you will, that, that self-control is listed here in verse 23 as one of the fruits of the Spirit. Let me explain. We talk about the fruits of the Spirit in church as if everybody has them. But it's not the case. Uh, every one of us is a spirit, but our spirit is not the one that's being referred to here. Uh, this passage is talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I, I had a series, and it, it's, it's God the Spirit, which we only have if we have invited Christ into our heart and allowed that spirit to save us by uniting us with Christ. So the fruit Paul is writing about here comes from the presence of and our yielding to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit is a sign that we are saved and that Christ is in us. And everybody's not saved and Christ is not in everybody. So, so what this passage is saying to us is that when we are following the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we are out of the jurisdiction of the law. For those of us who dislike the law and have a difficult time keeping it, you know, with the rules, God has given us an out from the, its jurisdiction. Uh, when I was a kid growing up in Madison, uh, Newport, which is a, a neighboring town, and they're just, just like real two small towns. And Newport had a, a curfew, nine o'clock. I, I guess the kids would get in too much trouble. So they say, now y'all gotta be in the house, uh, which I was mom and daddy by nine o'clock. And Newport was where the drugstore was, and Newport was where the pool hall was, and it seemed like everything good going on was going on in Newport. 
But Madison, Madison didn't have a, 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 a curfew like that. In, in the summertime, a bunch of us would, would sometimes hang out in Newport, and uh, we liked to hang out, uh, uh, you know, after 9 o'clock. No school, because school was out. And at first, the police didn't mind, but then uh, somebody did something, and all of a sudden, they're going to they're enforce, enforce the curfew. And I can remember us running through the alley and between houses to get to that alley that separated Madison and Newport. And when we got to the alley, we just looked at them because we were out of their control. Huh? Uh, the Holy Spirit offers us liberty. It helps us to get away from the law. Uh, so often people take scriptures out, out of context, so, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that, that you, you have the context on this. These Galatians were being pressured by the Jews into being under the bondage of the Jewish law, of their covenant. And, and Paul wanted to get them off. Okay? And I don't want to deceive you here, so, so I need to let you know that there, that there are a few strings attached. So, you know, he, he wanted to get them off, but he, 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 he said, he said uh, uh, I'm not giving you a license to sin. It's more to it than that. Paul says, and, and don't try to use this liberty. Sometimes we use our liberty to do what's wrong. That's not what it's about. Uh, some of us stop in the midst of our, our wrongdoing and, and I excuse ourselves by saying, you know, I, I, I know God or I love God. But then we go on doing what we're doing. Uh, the law is not negated here, as some people would say. Sin is still sin. But what the fruit of the Spirit does, listen to me now, is take charge of you and place you above and beyond the law. In fact, God, uh, God does through the Spirit what the law cannot do. All the law is is a mirror uh, that shows you you're out of bounds. That's why Jesus said the entire, entire law is fulfilled in one commandment. Thou shalt love. The first one is love your God. The second one is love your neighbor, your brothers and sisters as you love yourself. He warns us not to bite and devour one another. In fact, he says, as much as lies within you, if you're deciding, be at peace. Even, even if they don't like you, you think. You ain't got to not like them back. You know, some of us are always snapping and biting on one another, you know, every time we get a chance. Uh, but and we don't need to hold continuous debate with each other uh, about whose way is right all the time. Sometimes we just need to agree and to disagree. Right. And, and let me say this, and, and this is not a commandment. That this is just something that I, I picked up in my, in my time around here. It is not for us, for you and me, to always make our high-minded declarations <laughs> as if we're the last word on everything. Come on now. There are times when I just got to scratch my head and, and leave it up to God. Uh, he's the one with the last word. Yeah. We had a hairy discussion last Sunday in Sunday school uh, about homosexuality. And it was noted that there are some folk are, are, are born with it. And it was noted that the others thought that, well, you know what, that's just another sexual sin. And my commitment is, is to take the Bible as, as the last word. And the Bible did not agree with everything that we were saying. And I, I didn't see that uh, covered in creation story. But my position is that some stuff we just got to leave up to an individual and their God. And, I, I, you know, and, and I'm still scratching my head on some stuff. However, I know that we have a, a foundational truth from God that, 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 that we have to be committed to, that we got to love our brothers and our sisters. And it don't say if they black or, or white. It don't say if they're homosexual or straight. 
You just said love them. Huh? Now, I do believe, I do know that uh, we have to have a foundation. If we, if we throw the Bible away, what do we have? All our ideas. Hmm? That's right. And I'm not willing to base my life on varying opinions. One sure point God makes is that uh, we ought to love our brothers and sisters just like we love ourselves. And that's straight from Jesus. The rest of it is above my head. And God got to straighten it out. Well, okay, let's, let's get back on the uh, I mentioned earlier that the fruit of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, was an out from being in bondage to the law. Now, the details of that are found in verse number 16. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, before I elaborate on that, uh, look at how the, the message Bible uh, uh, says it. Live, freely animated and motivated by God's spirit. Live, live, freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feel the compulsions. Anybody got compulsions? Hmm. <laughs> or selfishness, the flesh. And, and when we become Christians, we find ourselves in a war between our flesh, which pushes us toward damnation, and the Holy Spirit of God, which pushes us toward freedom and, and peace and joy. And the results of our, our following our flesh are listed in verse 20 and 21. I ain't gonna read, I'm not going to read it again. But the bottom line is, is those who follow the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. Then in verse 22 and 23, we see the results of following uh, or giving ourselves or, or yielding to the Holy Spirit. Each of us is in a war between our fleshly spirit and the Holy Spirit of God. And each of us get to choose the winner in our lives. See, because uh, uh, the winner, I, I only get to choose the winner in my life. You get to choose the winner in your life. Satan can't make you choose his way, and God won't make you yield to the spirit. You got to choose. And I don't know about you, but it's an easy choice for me. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's not tempting sometimes to go the other way. That's not what I mean. What I'm saying is that it's easy to see which choice will benefit my life more. It's easy to see what I should do. I think everybody knows what they should do. The biggest problem is that many of us have not made that easy choice. But even when we have, it's another whole step to bring it into reality. If we allow our desires to lead our decisions, our, our lives will, will stay out of control. You ever seen anybody who out of control? Whatever they feel, they say. Whatever comes to their mind, they do. Unfortunately, uh, that describes some of us. And, and you know what? I think we need this as much as we need anything in the Bible. Self-control is a discipline that God grows us in. When the line grows, you don't snap your finger and you, are, you got it. It doesn't come all of a sudden. Self-control is a discipline that God grows in us when we continually choose, underline choose, when we continually choose to die to our flesh and live in the spirit. Now, if you get this concept, it'll change your life. Uh, I'm, not gonna go, I'm not going on until we get this. Uh, uh, you need to write this down and allow it to marinate in your mind. Uh, uh, Self-control is a discipline that God grows in us when we continually choose or not choose to die to our flesh and live in the spirit. 
Now, we've hinted to that a lot of times, but we have seldom made this the main point of the message. Uh, uh, we mentioned this, but we've never taken aim and gone after this out-of-control demon that is wreaking havoc in our lives and our church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it one more time. Self-control yeah. is a discipline that God grows in us when we continually choose to die to our flesh and live in the Spirit. And it, can I be real honest? This is the kind of thing you got to tell it like it is if it's going to make... Uh, we have cravings and urges and fulfilling our, our craving and filling our urges, uh, uh, blessing our flesh with what it wants so bad can feel real good in the moment. Huh? In the moment now. But soon after we, 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 we had it, soon after we did it, soon after we said it, we realized that it wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be. Am I, am I right? No. We have these urges and we got to have it. We, we got to buy it. We got to say it. We got to do it. And then why did I do that? And, and, and they take us further than we want to go and they, they cost us more than we want to pay. And uh, that goes for food, for sex, for revenge, for toys, for cars, for houses, for power, for revenge. And what the writer is talking about, uh, what God is offering us is, is freedom. But it's only found in honoring the healthy boundaries that God gives us as a choice to embrace. Freedom. You know how somebody come and they put it on the table and say, if you want something, you get it? God has put freedom on the table for us. But we don't have it until we embrace it. I say it is only found in honoring the healthy boundaries that God gives us as a choice to embrace. We've come this far, so, so we, we might as well go all the way and, uh, after this thing. Uh, 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 Romans 7, yeah. 18. Boy, I, read this, I first read this. This, is, this hit me in the mouth, and I, oh, I just. <laughs> Let me read it. It says, for I know, this is Paul talking again to the church in Rome, for I know that in me that is in my flesh. Nothing good dwells. He says, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I can't find. This is the NIV. We're going to do some three. Uh, NIV says, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I, I can't carry it out. Yeah. Now, the message Bible, ooh, it, it, bring, it brings it home. All right. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to read all this stuff. I know that all God's commands are spiritual, yeah, yeah. but I'm not. <laughs> Isn't that our experience? We spiritual sometimes when we're in church. It goes on. Yes, I'm full of myself. After all, I, I spent a long time in sin prison. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way. This is so good. But then I act another. Doing things I absolutely despise. You ever just hate yourself? So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. Yeah, yeah. But I need something more. For if I know the law, but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me 
keep sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realize what it says that I don't have what it takes in myself. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I, I do it anyway. Ooh. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me, and it gets the better of me every time. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's command, but it's obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Parts of me rebel. And just when I, I, I least expect that they take charge, I, I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Then the answer, thank God that Jesus Christ can and does. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that something that, I mean, doesn't that just, just find us and just describe us? I, I, I feel the, the, the Holy Spirit all over that. Uh, this applies to all of us. And not, not only is the, is the, world, uh, the, the world we live in beat down, controlled by sin, controlled by a lack of self-control, we might as well be honest. Much of the church is beat down and controlled by sin and a lack of self-control. We still sing. We still shout. We still dance. We, we speak in tongues. We, uh, we, we dress holy with our, uh, you know. We still look out down our noses at anybody not part of our religious clique. But when many of us are, are at home and the curtains are down, uh, sin gets the better of us. It's not just Kirk Franklin. We love God and all. We, we, uh, we have determination to do the will of God and all. Uh, we testify that we are saved, uh, are sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But too often, when the dust settles, sin wins. And that's why Paul said in another passage, I, I keep my body in subjection daily. daily. See? At least I sin against God. You know, and it, it's so frustrating to know what is right and still not be able to do it. So, 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 what's the missing piece? Between our knowledge and our action, Sin runs deep inside of us. We, uh, we, we try to burn it out. We, we try to starve it out, but it keeps coming back. But as a Christians, as Christians, we, we have the one in us who can give us the strength to stand up and say no to temptation. We don't have the strength on our own to be able to choose what's right, especially when it doesn't feel good at the time. What did Jesus say to the disciples? Don't y'all go into the world yet, but you go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift of God, the spirit of God. And then you can have power. And the reason that we have a problem with self-control is we don't have the power to make ourselves do what we ought to do, what we want to do even. Fortunately, we serve a, a very good, ever faithful God uh, who works wonders, scripture say, in, who works wonders in our weakness as we seek him. Jesus paid the price and made it all possible. 
The answer is the Holy Spirit within us and, and whether we are willing to yield and accept his help. It's on the table. And I'm not talking about us uh, uh, needing to call someone to, to come and help us who is uh, not present at the moment. Uh, by then it's too late. The Holy Ghost is always present if we have submitted ourselves to God and trusted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We used to have a member, and I'm just about done. And she's gone to glory now, uh, Sister Donna Gucci used to be our musician. But what sticks out now is a, a two-word prayer that she'd always say, Lord, help. Lord, help. Whatever she was being tempted to go off base, said, Lord, help. Uh, if we, if you uh, would just use her simple two-word prayer, they keep you in the victory circle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. Sometimes I need help. Let's practice it while, while there's no temptation. We're in church now. Before the game starts and the pressure's on us. Some people do good uh, uh, in practice. But when the game starts, they freeze up. Say it with me. Lord, help. This is practice, so we said, Lord help. Lord Again, help. Lord, help. Lord help. It works. If we ask God to help us, the helper is already here. Willing and able to help us, to give us strength. Uh, 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 God will put his finger on our scale and help us to win in the midst of temptation. God will put his holy on our natural and help us to uh, exhibit self-control. God will deliver us in temptation if we let him help. The question today is, will you accept? Now, if you're not saved, you need to uh, use the spirit and ask God to save you. But uh, if you're saved, because you know what? I'm not talking, this is not a message to uh, uh, unsaved people. Paul, Paul was saved when he wrote that. And he was trying hard and, and, and failing to be who he wanted to be. And, and somebody here, somebody listening, is trying hard and, and failing. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm, I'm ashamed to pray. Lord, I promised you yesterday. But here I am today in the same position. Anybody? Will you accept the help of the Spirit of God to give you self-control? Will you accept the help? Now you gotta want to. Will you accept the help of the Spirit of God? to give you self-control. Lord, Lord, help. I'm just about to cuss them out. Uh, I'm just about to knock them down. Lord, help. Will you accept? Will you let God help you? See, being filled with the Spirit means being controlled by the Spirit. It's not just a dance or a shout. But it's that Spirit, that self-control. Father God, we thank you. Couldn't do it by ourselves. One or two didn't do it. So many times, dear Lord, we've fallen in defeat in the face of sin, in the face of temptation. Thank you, Lord, that, that we're not under the law, but, but, but uh, you can grip our hearts and, and give us courage, Father, to make it through, to be a good example. 
And Father, we receive that help. We thank you for it. Help your church, Lord, to be what the church is called to be. Help your people, Lord, to be what your people are called to be. We'll give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make a commitment to let God help you. storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm My 
Your soul has been anchored in the Lord. My soul has been. Somebody say, in the Lord. Amen. My soul has been anchored. My wife and I were talking today about winning and losing and too many people of faith are locked into defeat keep on falling to the same thing the same temptation stuck into something that they know they ought not be in but it seems like they can't help themselves but if you say Lord help Sometimes all you need is a little boost, oh, yeah. uh, a little push. Sometimes just a reminder of who you are. And you won't have to live in defeat. I don't know about you, but it, it, it feels so much better to me to win than it is to lose. In fact, I don't like losing at all. And when I got the, 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 the Spirit of God on my side and, 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 he's, and he's got his, his finger on the scale and he's pushing me a little bit when I, I'm falling behind, that makes all the difference. When I say, Lord, help me, before I got it out, he's there already to get me through. Amen. Uh, uh, let us hear from you. Uh, put in the chat. Uh, is, it, is it chat or is it something else? Uh, amen. And, and, and you use it. Use it. I mean, uh, ask for God's help when you need it. 
And, and sometimes you, you know, even if you're shaky, in some areas uh, in life that we're shaky on, there are different areas. We are not all shaky on the same thing, but, but some areas in life where we're shaky on. So before you get there, say, Lord, now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shaky on this. I, I, I'm going to need your help to get through because I don't want to fall in here. Amen. Uh, God bless you. We, we thank God for the chance. And, and you know, it, self-control. Yeah. Self-control. God ain't going to make you. But he'll help you if you let him. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. The billows may roll, the breakers may dash, but I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark the days. The clouds in the sky, I know it's all right, cause Jesus is mine in the soul. My soul, my soul, my soul, my, 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 my soul. Oh, my soul has been. Somebody say in the Lord.